Civil 3D 2022.1 includes an updated target mapping dialog box that provides much more control when assigning targets to subassemblies. In this session, we'll explore the new dialog box and the many improvements it offers. On my screen, I have a drawing that contains several civil objects. Let's take a quick tour. First of all, I have an alignment called State Street. I have an existing ground surface called EG. Panning over to the right, we'll find both a surface profile and a finished grade profile for State Street. Panning back to the left, we'll find a pair of assemblies. The one on top is called State Street Typical. It consists of a left lane and right lane, each having a daylight. The assembly below is called State Street Bridge, and it was built from the bridge box girder subassembly. Now, the State Street alignment, profile, and assemblies were used to build the corridor we see on screen. This corridor consists of three regions. Let's take a look. I'm going to select the Modify Ribbon tab. I'd like to modify a corridor. I'll expand the Modify Region panel and choose Region Properties. This will highlight the regions as I hover over them. Here at the beginning, we can see Region 1, here's Region 2, and Region 3 is at the end. The first and last regions of this corridor utilize the Roadway Assembly, and the region in the middle uses the Bridge Assembly. Let's do one more thing. I'm going to jump back to the Home tab and turn on a layer. Here we can see a pair of offset alignments. One is called State Street Right, and the other is called State Street Left. As a side note, each of these alignments also has a corresponding finished grade profile. I would like to use these alignments and profiles to drive the overall width of the roadway. As you can see, the road will be wider here at the beginning and taper down to meet the bridge, and after the bridge it will widen back out again. So let's assign these objects as horizontal and vertical targets for the lanes. To do that, I'll select the Modify Ribbon tab. I'd like to modify a corridor. I'll choose Edit Targets. And when it asks for the region to edit, I'll click to select the first region and press Enter. On screen, we can see the brand new target mapping dialog box. I'm sure you'll agree it's quite large. If I click and hold in the lower right corner, I can squeeze it down a little. If you have two monitors, I recommend dragging this to another screen. If you're a single monitor person like me, take a look at the push pin in the upper right. If I click and unpin this, the dialog box will collapse until such time as I need it. I can then simply hover over it to reopen. Also notice that when this dialog box is open, I can continue to pan and zoom. I can even launch commands and continue working on my drawing. This wasn't possible in prior versions of Sybil 3D. At the top of the dialog box, we can see the corridor name and the start and end stations of the baseline. The dialog box is divided into two tabs, Offset and Elevation, this is where we assign horizontal and vertical targets, and Surface, for the assignment of surface targets. Let's flip back to Offset and Elevation. In this list, we can see all of the sub-assemblies in the selected region that support horizontal and vertical targets. Using the toggles on the right, the list can be collapsed to show just the sub-assembly names, or expanded to display the names along with their target properties. I'm going to collapse the list again, and I'll zoom in on the roadway assembly in the drawing. Note that if you select a sub-assembly in the list, it will highlight in the assembly. Not only will it highlight in the assembly, it will highlight in the corridor as well. Now let's zoom in on the corridor a little bit. Imagine if this was a much more complicated corridor model made up of many different assemblies. If you right-click on a sub-assembly in the list, you can choose Zoom to Assembly, and it will take you right to the assembly where the sub-assembly lives. Likewise, right-clicking on a sub-assembly can take you to the specific location in the corridor where the sub-assembly is used. Note there are some pan options here as well. When I choose Zoom to Corridor, the drawing view is focused on the selected sub-assembly in the model. As you can see, this provides a nice visual way to identify how a corridor is built. This is also something that wasn't possible in prior versions of Civil 3D. Okay, I'm going to pan the drawing over so we can see Region 1 again. At the moment, I have the right lane selected. Let's assign the horizontal and vertical targets for this lane. I'll click to expand the subassembly and I'll choose the width target first. If the horizontal target is in alignment, it can be selected here on the left. Non alignment horizontal targets are chosen on the right. In both areas, targets can be selected by name by object using this green block, or by layer. Note that on the right, the name column will display the object name if it has one, or the layer name if it does not. 
For this example, I'd like to target the State Street right alignment. As I select this, we can see selected targets also highlight on screen. When finished, I'll click Apply to update the corridor. Next, we'll take care of the elevation. I'll click to select Outside Elevation Target, and I'll choose the State Street Right Finished Grade Profile. I may have to drag this over a little to see the full name. When I'm finished, I'll click Apply. Let's take care of the left lane now. I'll select it, and we can see it highlight on screen. I'll select Width Target, and we'll look at one more thing. Notice as I drag up and down, you can see there are actually several alignments in this file. In a real-world drawing, you may have alignments representing other roadways, curb returns, utilities, or parking geometry. The more alignments you have, the more challenging it could be to navigate this list to select the name of a target. Notice there's now a filter option available. Using the filter, I can enter an offset to limit the number of entries shown. As an example, I'll type 15. This will show me all possible horizontal targets, alignment or otherwise, that are within 15 feet of the corridor baseline. When I press Enter, you can see how the list is shortened. I'm going to choose the State Street Left alignment as my target, and I'll click Apply. Finally, I'll select the Elevation Target option and choose State Street Left Finished Grade Profile, and click Apply and OK to close the dialog box. If I zoom and pan around, it's easy to see how those targets are controlling the lanes at the beginning of this corridor model. That said, let's zoom out. If you remember, the first and last region of this corridor use the same assembly. They also require the same targets. Fortunately, the new target mapping dialog box makes it easy to copy and paste targets between sub-assemblies. Let's take a look. The corridor tools are still on screen, so I'll choose Edit Targets. I will then click inside Region 3 and Region 1 and press Enter. On the Offset and Elevation tab, I'll click to collapse the list to the sub-assembly names. The sub-assemblies we see here are the ones in both Region 1 and 3 that support horizontal and vertical targets. Just for a second, take a closer look at these columns. Here we can see metadata associated with each sub-assembly. Everything from the baseline to the region, start and end station, the assembly it comes from, and the side, as well as several other items. These columns can be filtered to allow us to focus on specific sub-assemblies. As an example, I'm interested in the lane sub-assemblies. If I click the arrow at the top of this column, I can deselect all and display only the lanes. I will then click outside to close the list, and you can see how the list is shortened. Since I'd like to assign the targets on the right side first, I'll click that column header and isolate the lanes on the right side. Just for a second, I'll drag the dialog box down, and using the highlighting, I can easily see which lane is in Region 3 and which is in Region 1. Technically, we don't need to use the highlighting here. The region data or the stationing can also be used to tell the lanes apart. To copy and paste the targets, I'll right-click on the lane from Region 1 and choose Copy Targets. I will then right-click on the lane from Region 3 and choose Paste Targets. By right-clicking on the subassembly, I was able to copy all of the targets, both horizontal and vertical. If I click to expand each of these, you can see the targets are also displayed in these columns. As a side note, clicking on a target in the column provides another way to access the target selection tools below. When finished, I'll click Apply, and we can see those changes on screen. Now let's do the same thing for the left side. I'll start by clicking the Clear Filters button, and then I'll collapse the list to names. Once again, I'd like to see lanes only, and I'm only interested in the lanes on the left side. I'll right-click the lane from Region 1 and choose Copy Targets, and then I'll right-click the lane from Region 3 and choose Paste Targets. And I'll click Apply and OK, and zoom in to review the changes on screen. As you can see, using the new Target Mapping dialog box, we can easily copy and paste targets between sub-assemblies. This is also something that wasn't possible in prior versions of Civil 3D. Finally, we'll assign surface targets to the daylight sub-assemblies. Once again, I'll select Edit Targets, and this time, when asked to select a region, I'll tap A for All and press Enter. To assign surface targets, I'll select the Surface tab. On this tab, we can see a listing of all corridor sub-assemblies that support surface targets. Note that the function of this tab is identical to the Offset and Elevation tab. Once again, I'll collapse these down to Name Only. In this far right column, there's a Set All option. I point this out because it works a little different now than it did in prior versions of Civil 3D. As an example, I'll click Set All for the first sub-assembly. Looking at the data, we can see this happens to be in Region 1 on the right side. I'll then select the existing ground surface as a target and click Apply. 
we can see the target was applied to that subassembly only. If I come back and expand these, we'll find that set all applies to all possible targets for a single subassembly, which is different than what we're used to. Now, this is still selected, so I'm going to click to remove this target, and I'll click apply, and then I'll collapse this list again. To assign the existing ground surface to all of these subassemblies, I'll select the first one. I will then hold down my shift key and select the last one. When they're all selected, I'll click set all, choose the surface, and then click apply. And we can see the final result on screen. If you'll indulge me for just a second, I'm going to remove this target and click apply. And you can see it's gone. I will then press escape to clear the selection. Based on what we've seen so far, another way we could have handled this would be to assign the target to the first one, then right click and copy the target, then select the remaining subassemblies, right click and paste. When finished, I'll click apply and OK to close the dialog box. As you can see, Civil 3D 2022.1 provides much more control over the assignment of corridor targets. The new highlighting, filtering, and copy-paste features can help make even complex corridor designs easier to create and edit.